Welcome to Sooner Sports Pod. Happy Veterans Day. Thank you to all who have served our country and who are continuing to serve. That's right. We just wanted to take a moment to say thank you. Welcome to Studio D on the campus of the University of Oklahoma. This is Sooner Sports Pad. Now, here's your host, Allison Gappa. Welcome to Sooner Sports Pad. I'm Allison Gappa alongside Matt McCulloch and Lauren Nevitt, and we are leading up to the men's home opener against North Texas at 7 on Fox Sports Oklahoma. So be sure to flip over if you're watching live on Monday. Yeah, you guys, it's going to be a very exciting game. It's the first home game of the season. So lots going on tonight. There is a lot going on, including Austin Woods. He's in studio, senior captain of the football team. We're going to talk with him later on. And later we'll take a look at this year's young men's basketball team. Also later, me and Matt are going head to head and face off when we talk about what bowl game OU will be playing in. Well, OU is coming off a loss to Baylor, 41 to 12. First quarter, Baylor trailed 5 to 3, Lauren, because of a strong start on defense for the Sooners. Yeah, defense was very strong against the best offense in the nation right now. The usually high-flying Bears struggled to move against the Sooners throughout the first quarter and a half. So the Oklahoma defense was doing everything they possibly could to give the Sooners a chance to take an early lead. They pressured QB Bryce Petty and limited Lake Seastrunk in the Baylor run game. They also forced Baylor to punt on two of its first three offensive possessions, which never happens. And the Sooners also gained momentum when freshman linebacker Dominique Alexander sacked Petty in the end zone for a safety. Oh, yeah. The Sooners are able to keep Baylor from scoring a TD for nearly 23 minutes. OU was able to hold them just to three points until midway through the second. The only problem was that the Sooner offense couldn't stay on the field long enough to give the defense You're a right. break. You're right, Lauren. Offensively, the Sooners weren't able to get going. Matt, only 237 total yards on offense. That's right. A big tactic in Oklahoma's game plan was to get the offense moving and scoring a lot. But unfortunately, they never did. Uh, that never did happen for the Sooners. Blake Bell threw for only 150 yards and had two interceptions. And OU's leading rusher Thursday, Roy Finch, for only 36 yards. Oklahoma didn't get a touchdown until the third quarter, which really hurts. And when you're playing a, an opponent like Baylor, who averages over 60 points a game, the offense needs to get, get it done. And Lauren Baylor pulls away with quarterback Bryce Petty scoring five touchdowns to keep Baylor undefeated. Yeah, he put together three of his five total touchdowns in the last seven minutes of the first half. Two of those TDs were in the final minute before halftime, giving Baylor a comfortable lead. The Baylor defense forced two OU three and outs to start the second half, and you know that's never good. And then early on in the second half, another touchdown officially cemented oh, the Baylor win. A 28-0 Baylor run by the third quarter wiped out the 5-3 Oklahoma lead, and it was the fourth worst loss under Bob Stoops. Oh, Yikes. Yikes. Well, that they hurts. have a chance to redeem themselves on Saturday. It's senior day, 11 a.m., Iowa State. Guys, what are your predictions for this one? I'm predicting yeah. OU wins. OU gets 34, yep. Iowa State 10. Oklahoma is playing at home, and Iowa State hasn't won a Big 12 game in 2013. So as long as OU gets its offense together, they should have no problem. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and say that OU wins this one 41 to 17. Uh, I don't, you know, you got to remember that Iowa State, they hung with a very good Texas team earlier in the season. So OU can't really, you know, overlook them too much because Iowa State is going to pounce uh, this Saturday and try to take advantage of a team that just got off a pretty big loss. We'll see on Saturday. We'll see. Yep. We will see soon enough, just like they said. Moving on to women's basketball. The women's basketball team is already in the preseason women's NIT semifinal. Mm -hmm. They were able to show off how dominant they were on Friday when the number 11 Oklahoma Sooners defeated Stetson 78-60 to in the preseason women's NIT first-round contest. Aaron Ellenberg scored 24 points and hit four consecutive three-pointers through a 10-minute second-half run Ooh. that sealed the game for the Sooners. And redshirt sophomore Kaylin Williams added 17 points in her return to the court after missing last season with a torn Achilles tendon. And on Sunday in the second round, Oklahoma powered past the Wichita State Shockers 89-70 to throughout Ooh. a great team effort. Despite Ellenberg only getting one basket in the first half, the Sooners were able to score 46 points in the first half. Dang. The train Campbell scored a game-high and career-high 24 points 
as the Sooners fought their way to the paint when its perimeter offense was stalled. And Campbell was 9 for 9 from the free throw line and had 14 wow. first half points. So wow. Sooner basketball doing well. Also, play, also, the men's basketball played this weekend, and we'll go into that later on in the show. That's right. And the fifth-ranked OU wrestling team continued their red-hot start to the season as they claimed their 15th straight Brockport wrestling Invitational this weekend in New York. As a team, the Sooners totaled 168 points and had six of its wrestlers won individual titles. And get this, what? no other team has ever taken home the Brockport Invitational title wow. since its inception. So oh my God. that right there oh, is awesome. domination, folks. Yeah. The next test for the undefeated Sooners will be right here when they host Hofstra and Bucknell next Sunday at the historic McCaslin Fieldhouse. Good for wrestling. It's very good. Well, one team that didn't do as well this weekend was Oklahoma oh. Volleyball. They were swept again yeah. by number 25, Iowa State. The Cyclones held Man. the Sooners hitting percentage to just .086. That's bad. This is the first is time bad. the Sooners have lost three consecutive matches since dropping four straight in 2011. But some good news. Sally McLaurin just took over eighth all-time at OU in okay. career kills. So Sooners okay. are now 6-5 and five in Big 12. Not terrible. Not, not too right. bad. Not, too, not bad. too bad. All right. Thanks, guys. Well, don't go anywhere because coming up next in face-off, we're going to debate which bowl game OU should go to. We're also going to preview the men's basketball team. They have a game tonight at 7. And here's a live look at Lloyd Noble for their home opener. Stay with us. Do I need to switch to the, the stick mic? Not making it to the national championship. Stay with the headset. Okay, and then should I just pick the winner or should I have the crew help me pick the winner? I think the crew should. Be like, crew, what do you think? And then they'll be like, ah. Yeah. <laughs> That's what you guys will be like. Carter. <laughs> All right. I I'm having crew. the crew pick. I think that'll Okay, get. okay. Yeah.
Shooter Sports Pod. It's now time for Face Off where we debate hot topics. Guys, first up, does Baylor go undefeated and to the national championship game? Lauren, you're up first. Oh, the Bears don't have a chance. Baylor is not making it to the national championship game. You still have Alabama and FSU who are ranked okay. number one and number two. FSU only has to play Syracuse, Idaho, and Florida, and those are all ranked, so they should have no problem with those teams. And you know Alabama is going to win out the rest of their season. Even if Baylor blows out the rest of their schedule, they're still only going to get – they're still going to win the Big 12. They just won't make it to Pasadena this year. Well, I'm going to have to disagree with you there and say that, yes, they proved against Oklahoma last week that they're one of the nation's top team. If, they, if Baylor can just win out and do so in the fashion that they've been doing all season long, yeah. then why why shouldn't they be considered in it? I want them to it? make it to the title well, game, I mean, but they well, probably won't. They rank in the top ten in just about every single category, so they're a really good team. They have Alabama if, and FSU. If they win out, they're gonna have, it's going to be pretty impressive, and they should go. They should all right, go. which bowl game will OU go to, Lauren? It all depends on the OSU game. If the Sooners can pick up their offense yep. and beat OSU, then they can be ranked second and make it to the Cotton Bowl. I mean, OSU is definitely beatable. They barely beat West yeah. Virginia, and they still have to play Baylor. But then on the other hand, you have Texas that you need to worry about. They just barely beat West Virginia this past weekend, and they still have their three hardest teams coming up in their schedule. So we can, or the Sooners can still get second place. All right, well, let me, let me sing you a little tune real quick. Let me sing you a little tune. That train keeps a rolling. Uh -huh. On down to San Antonio. Who, who's that? Who I, sings that? Johnny Cash. That's Johnny Leave Cash right Johnny there. Cash I think that saying. if OU can just win out the rest of the way, uh, they'll get to face the Pac-12 second place team down in San Antonio for the Alamo Bowl. Um, okay. So they'll have to be third in the Big 12. I think that, you know, the Big 12 is going to be shaken up here in the next couple of weeks with Texas and Oklahoma State and Baylor all having to play each other. So we'll see how it turns out. But I think, yeah. I think it's a safe bet. Alamo I wouldn't Bowl. mind going to San Antonio. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Which sport <laughs> brings OU their next national title? Oh, just leave it up to the softball team. They will definitely get the next national yeah. title. Not bad. They're returning Not bad. national championships. Yeah. They know they're good. They're returning Lauren Chamberlain and Destiny Martinez, who played for the USA team for the women's softball this summer. Yeah. And they already finished their fall ball season 8-0, to zero, and they weren't just beating teams. They were shutting them out, like 12-0. Right. This is a good team. Well, I like that pick a lot. I really do. But I'm going to go ahead and say that the, that the wrestling team is looking right. primed and they ready to take home a national title. They currently have two guys right now who, are, uh, who rank number one in their weight classes, one of which is Kendrick Maple, who was a national awesome. champion a last beast. year on his uh, individual yeah. for him. So, uh, you know, they have a lot of redshirt seniors on this team that are obviously very uh, uh, talented and experienced. I think they can, they can make a run at this. I think they can do it. Well, guys, I'm sure that you're enjoying our rowdy crew tonight <laughs> as much as we I am. Love. So I'm going to turn to you guys. Here we go. Was it Lauren that's our winner? Yeah. Oh, listen to that. That's pretty wild. That I, I don't know. Good. I need a little bit that of help here. I need some help from right the guys. There. Or was it Matt? Yeah. I think I got this one. Uh, I, think, no. I think Lauren got this no. one tonight. I'm so so it's now time for our Tweet of the Week. This one coming from the OU Athletics Twitter account. Thank you to all those that have served and are currently serving our great country. Happy Veterans Day. And what a cool picture is that. Well, don't go anywhere because coming up next, we're going to preview the OU men's basketball team. And we've got Austin Wood, senior captain of the football team, in studio. Don't go anywhere.
This is at the beginning, like just coming up right now. And then Austin. Okay. Okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Taking a live look at it. Hold on, ready you got. We're taking a live look at Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five. Special thanks to our Cornerstone Television partners, Chesapeake Energy, Windstar World Resorts, Anheuser-Busch, OU Outreach, OU Alumni Association, OU Medicine, and the OU Presidents Associates. Welcome back to Sooner Sports Pad. We're taking a live look at our basketball guys warming up for tonight's game at 7 against North Texas you know what? They traveled to Dallas on Friday to start out their season. This is their home opener, but with an influx of young talent, Sooner Sports Pad's Kate Sandoval takes a look and previews what the Sooners have to look forward to. Those sounds can only mean one thing. It's basketball season. For the Oklahoma Sooners, expectations are high after making an appearance at the NCAA tournament last season, the club's first since 2009. But this year's roster is missing something. Six somethings. It's a really different team. You know, we're not that big, but we got a um, small, small group of guys um, that can just go out there and play hard each and every day. We lost um, six good, great players, you know, um, but I think we're very confident in the group that we have today. Um, well, right now, um, we have a couple of young guys, but they're ready to step up and um, showcase what we've been working on. Leaders like Clark say team chemistry is great and the guys love to play around. But were they ready to face Alabama in their season opener? As long as we come out and play hard, like coach practice, like he taught us in practice, I feel like we're going to win. Woodard is one of those young guys, a true freshman from Arcadia, Oklahoma, who averaged over 15 points, seven rebounds, and nearly seven assists his senior season at Edmond Memorial. Standards are also high for sophomores Buddy Heald and Ryan Spangler. Heald returns after scoring more than 200 buckets for the Sooners last season. Spangler is an Oklahoma native and Gonzaga transfer, joining the Sooners on the court after sitting out a year. With confidence, the Sooners headed south to face the Crimson Tide, who were also rolling into Dallas for their season opener. After trailing by 16 points in the first half, the Sooners came back in the second, attacking the basket to win 82-73. It was the young guys who brought the heat. Buddy Heald hit a new career high, 19 buckets, shooting a solid 50% from the floor. And in his OU debut, Ryan Spangler wowed with a double-double. 15 points, 12 boards, and the addition of two steals. Yeah, that's one of uh, the biggest goals for me. You know, I think that, that helps the team in the little ways just to win a ball game, you know, um, playing defense, rebounding, you know, diving after loose balls. I think that's what wins the games. And he's done that, you know, every day in practice, and he loves to rebound, he, he loves to run the floor. Spangler crashed the boards, and Heald brought the energy. These are things the Sooner Club will rely on heavily this season. The freshman Jordan Woodard went five for six at the line and led the game with seven assists and committed just two turnovers in 34 minutes. The Sooners set the stage for the season with a win against Bama and Dallas, but it's just the start as the journey continues tonight at the Lloyd Noble Center. Kate Sandoval, Sooner Sports Pad. Thanks, Kate. If you're watching us live, the Sooner basketball team plays tonight at 7 against North Texas following Sooner Sports Pad on Fox Sports Oklahoma. Well, Matt and Lauren, guys, thoughts on OU's win over Alabama and what we can expect from this Sooner squad? I think the squad is going to be a good team, and part of that is because of Gonzaga transfer Ryan Spangler. Oh, yeah. He waited 18 months to play. He can finally play. He's a six foot eight forward. He's a very vocal player on the team. He helps out a lot on defense. And against the Alabama game, he was the MVP for the game, and he just got Big 12 Newcomer of the Week. So I think we should expect a lot from Spangler this season. 
Yeah, I think that OU fans should be very excited on where this program is headed right now. They have a really well-respected uh, coach in Lon Kruger, and mm -hmm. I think that Buddy Heald is going to be that guy this year that's kind of going to take over, you know, Romero Osby's role, who we, who we lost last year to the draft, but take over his role as kind of the leader and maybe the guy that they can, they can kind of count on every, every night, so... I don't know. That's right. A lot of young talent for the Sooners. And like I mentioned, it's tonight at 7, the Sooners home opener against North Texas. And if you can't go to it, then check it out on Fox Sports Oklahoma at 7. Well, Matt and Lauren are now joined by senior captain of the football team, Austin Woods. Guys? Yeah. Austin, thanks for being here. No Okay, so this is the question that's on everyone's minds. What does the Sooner offense need to do to regroup against Iowa State this weekend? Well, I just need. Uh, I think we need to play like uh, like we're capable of. You know, we uh, obviously disappointed the way we played against Baylor, so we just need to uh, pick ourselves back up and, uh, and go out there and play some ball. Well, you guys obviously still have a lot to play for this season. So, how are you and maybe the other players kind of getting your mind right to kind of finish strong this season? Uh, well, it starts this uh, this weekend, uh, uh, Saturday against uh, Iowa State. Mm -hmm. uh, it's senior day. We got a lot of seniors that uh, have done a lot for this program. So, uh, you know, me included, we want the whole team wants to send us out right. So. Uh, we'll, we'll play hard this weekend and uh, hopefully uh, leave uh, Owen Phil with one more win. Yeah. That's right. Like you said, it's senior day this weekend. You guys have 17 seniors on your team. What's it going to be like for you being a team captain and everything else going on? It'll be a special day, probably a little emotional, uh, walking off the field for the last time. But uh, had a lot of memories there, so looking forward to making one more. Well, Austin, you were diagnosed with Hodgkin's lymphoma in 2012 and still went on with all the summer and the fall practices. So what was that like? I mean, take us through like how that, you know, how that was for you. Uh, you know, I just, uh, after I was diagnosed, I said, I'm going to do everything I can to stay physically active and stay, uh, you know, mentally active. So I kept going to class too. I never missed a class either. So I'm kind of, kind of <laughs> proud about that one too. So, uh, you know, I just wanted to be around my teammates and, and, and be around and just keep working out as much as I could. So that really helped me out with all the going through the chemo at the same time. And I'm sure that encouraged them to work even harder, too. Yeah, you know, I, I hope I, I inspired some people, but a lot of people say I inspired them. But my teammates, uh, my coaches, Senior Nation, they all inspired me to keep fighting, too. That's awesome. Well, you've been in remission for a little over a year yeah. now. What? Tell me what that's like. Uh, it's great. You know, it's uh, you get to that one-year mark, it's, it's pretty special. So... Uh, you know, just uh, hope to see cancer free for uh, years down the road. Yeah. Well, going through all this, how has it kind of changed you, maybe as a person or maybe even a player even? Uh, you know, you just, uh, every time you step on that field, you appreciate it a little more because you never know, you know, what's going to uh, pop up in life and take the game away from you. Uh, luckily, you know, I was able to still play during my right. cancer fight, uh, but uh, you never know when, you're, when your last snap's going to be, so just cherish every moment. Over the past four years, what is, how has your time been playing for the Sooners? It's been great, you know, uh, uh, playing a lot of big football games, uh, uh, made a lot of good friends, and it was just, uh, it's been a great time, dream come true, playing big time college football at, uh, at OU, one of the most historic programs, in, you know, ever. Great. Allison? Such so an much. inspiring story from Austin Woods. We are so lucky to have him in studio with us as our guest. Don't go anywhere, though, because coming up next, he's still here. He's going to play Fresh Quest for Victory in a bit of a marshmallow toss. You don't know what a marshmallow toss is? Well, you're about to find out. Don't go anywhere.
Austin's been a been a great, great uh, player here, a great teammate. Has worked hard, overcome a you know uh, you know fighting through uh, what he did uh, to to battle cancer while going through a summer workouts and just an inspiration to 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 our whole team, to us as coaches, and and again the great you know person that he is. That was Coach Stoops today at his press conference talking about the inspirational story of Austin Woods, senior captain, who is with us in studio. He's about to play Fresh Quest for Victory. But first up, coming up this week on Suter Sports TV, if you're watching us live, be sure to tune over to Fox Sports Oklahoma for the men's basketball game against North Texas and then again on Wednesday against Idaho at 7. Also that night at 7, Sooner Volleyball taking on TCU and Thursday night at 7 is the women's basketball game versus Gonzaga. Be sure to catch right. your local Ooh. listings and Soonersports.tv for a complete schedule. Well, it's now time for Fresh Quest for Victory where we play a little game, have a little bit of fun. They're getting some whipped cream back there. There's marshmallows. Oh, wow. oh, yeah. We've got Lauren teamed up with Austin Woods, who's been joining us all show Dream long, team. senior captain of team. the football team. And then we've got Matt and Matthew Matt's. on a team. We gotta do this. Lauren, right. Matt, how does this game work? Okay, so as you see, we have some marshmallows. Basically what we're gonna do is toss them to our partner and hope that they can catch it in their mouth. <laughs> and the losers have a little bit of a surprise after the game, which won't be too pleasant. Like marshmallows. Oh, All right, here we go. I love you. Three, anyway, two, two right here. one, go. Okay, Austin. Yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> one okay, for the mats. Oh. Oh, okay. Oh, one for Austin. Right. It's one, one to one. one. Sorry. Two oh, to one. It's two to oh, one. Austin right, in the lead. Sorry, that was bad throw. Bad throw. I'm being a bad quarterback. Oh, lost in the line. Yeah, there we go. That's good luck right there. I like that. Oh, there's a oh. It's two to two. Two two. Three. Oh, three two. Oh, three to three. Oh, get in there. Just sit. Oh, get in there. Okay, okay. Just stick your tongue out. Still three to three. Come on. Oh, oh, we got four. We got four for Austin. We got ten seconds. Okay. Ten seconds. Yeah, I'm sorry. Five, Five for Austin. Ready? I gotta redo one myself. More, Give one me more. one more. Ah. One more, one more, one more. All right. Oh. Austin. Oh, oh that's six. Six, yeah. six to three. Yeah. All right. What's our surprise for our when? losers? Oh. Oh no. Oh, 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 I don't care. Oh. Oh. You get one. Oh. Ready? Oh. Oh. Two, oh. one. Oh. 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 Uh oh. No, no, no. No, no, no. <laughs> Sooner Sports so Pad. Good. If you're watching no, no. live, be sure to go over to that Fox Sports Oklahoma game. They're playing North Texas. Also, happy Veterans Day. See you guys later. Oh. Ah!